Well, today we're going to be talking about a calculus concept called motion. And in fact, we're going to be talking about motion along the x-axis. And it might seem kind of strange, but that's just what it means. Some object is moving left and right along a horizontal axis, and we're most familiar with the x-axis, and so we're going to be talking about that. Uh, main thing is we're going to be talking about three key concepts. You keep these in mind. And the three key concepts are position. Now position is, is determined by uh, where the particle is at a certain time. So that's why we call it x of t. Okay? So x of t is the position. And the rate at which the position changes, now that calculus concept of derivatives that we've been studying, now we get to actually put it into place, uh, put it into practice. So the rate of change of the position, dx dt, would be the velocity. And the velocity is determines how fast the posi position is changing, as well as the direction. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the acceleration would be the rate at which the velocity is changing. So how quickly is the velocity changing, and, and in what direction? Meaning, is the velocity getting, sm uh, getting less, or is it, getting, is, it, is it growing? Okay, so anyway... We're going to be talking about that as well. But keep in mind that motion along the x-axis, we always have three things going on at any time. Okay, We have the position of the object. And let's say in the beginning at t equals 0, this particular object was at position 2. Okay, Well, that's fine. It can move to the right, it can move to the left, uh, but it's going to be moving back and forth along the x-axis. And three things, like I said, are going to be happening at any one time. The position the velocity at that time, and also the acceleration. Okay, so those are the three concepts we're going to be covering. All right, so let's go ahead and start filling out this sheet here so you guys can get a good idea of the vocabulary, which is really important, the vocabulary. Um, now, if you didn't pause the video and, and copy those down, or if you didn't have enough time to copy them down, let's keep it simple. X of t is the position. Okay. V of t is the derivative of the position, that's the velocity, at time t. And then the A of t, the acceleration at any one time, is how quickly is the velocity changing, or the first derivative of the velocity, or the second derivative of the position. So that we're going to call that the acceleration. Okay, I just want to have that there while we go through this sheet. Uh, now, you're going to hear terms like initially, okay? So initially means what's happening. Is it position, velocity, acceleration? Well, that's actually time when time t is equal to zero, okay? So initially, in the beginning, okay, that's when t is equal to zero. At the origin then, so at the origin means, again, either position, velocity, or acceleration. Well, in this case, at the origin, at is a location, and location is position position equals zero. So we're going to say x of t is equal to zero. So that's the position. Okay. Now, at rest. Well, at rest means what? Could be at rest anywhere. So that's not position. At rest would mean, mean you're not moving. And if you're not moving, then your velocity, v of t, is going to be equal to zero. Okay. Number four. If the velocity is positive, velocity positive, then the particle's moving to the right. Okay, so we haven't talked about that, but that's what that means. Yeah. So the velocity gives us not only the rate of change of the position, but it, meaning speed, uh, well, I mean speed and direction. So it gives us speed and direction. It gives us rate of change as well as what direction. So if the uh, velocity of the particle is negative, then the particle is moving to the left. So that's a key concept there. To find average velocity over a time interval, you want to divide the change, so average velocity, you want to divide the change in position by the change in time. And we know that distance equals rate times time, and uh, so this is kind of, a, we'll talk more about that, but that's, it's related to that. So the rate equals the distance over time, that's the speed, the average speed, but average velocity also gives us a... Uh, involves the direction as well. Again, we'll talk more about that. This is more of something to kind of keep handy while you go through different problems in this section. Instantaneous velocity is velocity at a single moment in time. Okay, and that's the derivative at a certain moment. And then we have if the acceleration of the particle is positive, acceleration of the particle is positive, 
then the velocity is increasing. Okay. Again, any function that is increasing, its derivative then would be a positive number. So if the acceleration of the particle is blank, then the velocity is decreasing. So if the acceleration is negative, okay. In order for a particle to change direction, the blank must change sign. So direction would be velocity. So velocity gives us direction, okay. So this has to be the velocity must change signs, okay. And then if the excel, let's see, one way to determine total distance. So we're going to hold off on this guy right here, and we're going to pick it up in the next video.